Callisto Protocol will, in fact, scare the pants off of all of us. There will be no more pants. What is fear? Fear is such a basic part of who we are. Where is it created? Atmosphere in a game like this is everything. It's terrifying, but it's beautiful. And how can we use it? With horror, there's no rules. Glenn Schofield and the developers of the Callisto Protocol invite you to join them and some very special icons of horror. I think it goes back to the earliest times around a campfire. The perfect horror experience is something that, that scares the piss out of me. Think of it as a roller coaster. I want it to make me feel things. I want it to startle me. They're all magic tricks. That's what we're doing in the movies. As they discuss crafting the perfect horror experience. <laughs> The five tenets of horror for the Callisto Protocol are brutality, atmosphere, tension, helplessness, and humanity. The Callisto Protocol is mastering horror. Brutality is part of that, oh, that shock value. And shock is just one of the emotions of horror, right? And so I kind of look for those to affect people a little bit. What we wanted the project to be was really about looking at films and games and kind of thinking about how we wanted our project to sit within those. You know, we watch these movies and it does give you a feeling. It was a lot of fun because there was a lot of research. <laughs> when you sit down on the couch or go to the movie theater to watch a movie, you're experiencing someone else's story and you can feel things by experiencing that story and, and it can be very moving, but there's always going to be a distance between you and that character. One of the things that video games does that I think heightens things for storytelling purposes is it puts you in the center of that story. So you are the one performing tasks. You are the one succeeding when the character succeeds. I think the growth in that is exponential. I mean, I think it's gonna be massive, um, even from where it is now. Whoever the next George Lucas is, he, she, they, at 13 years old, they have a controller in their hands. It's an experience that is unrivaled in other forms of entertainment. There are two movies, um, Hostel and Martyrs, in which there was a scene in each one that were so brutal that it affected me. Like for a couple of weeks, I'm like, oh, gee, you know, just thinking about it, I'm like, man, that was, that was really brutal. The concept of brutality is, well, it's certainly useful. Brutality is a very specific kind of trauma. It is usually senseless. It usually has a visceral, almost excessive amount of violence to it. They don't pull punches at all in this game. And I was like, whoa, Glenn, Scott, Chris, you guys are crazy. We wanted to get to something that felt very raw, very real for the player. And, and that's a fantastic tool for, for really sort of cutting through the noise in some respects, for connecting with people and evoking that kind of almost like lizard brain reaction of terror and fear to what's happening on screen. You know, conflict is drama and physical conflict, AKA brutality, is the most primal form of, of conflict. And it's something that everyone can understand. You have to be very, very careful with it. You know, you see somebody come along and chop somebody else's head off, like, like Tom Savini did in, in uh, Friday the 13th. Well, that had never been done before. It became like a magic trick. You say, how do they do that? But it's gone. And, and, and then you go forward. I do the same thing a magician does. A magician, 
uh, is trying to make you believe that what you're seeing is really happening. Well, that's what we're doing in the movies. We do have a lot of parts coming off and dismemberment and all of that. We have bones showing up, but it's not like, oh, this game is about showing the bones. No, I think it's about the combination. This is really about survivorship. I've got a bone up. I actually have to match that level of violence. I have to become offensive. It also so crosses a line from civilized behavior that it lets you know that in this story, this is the world we are in now. You know, you really have to put your characters through the ringer in horror. If you have a guy trying to get from point A to point B, you know, that's a story. You can have conflicts happen along the way. Uh, if he's got a broken leg and his bones hanging out, the story's about 10 times more interesting, to me at least. <laughs> I'm just trying to give you a chance at rebirth. In creature design, no matter how fanciful, if you have one toe in reality, maybe, you're going to fare better than if you are doing something that is a complete flight of fantasy. You know, biophage didn't just happen. It took a lot of like nuances and drawings and sketches and 3D pieces and, and stuff like that. And then I realized personally, the thing that scares me the most is a deranged human. When you make a character that is two arms, two legs, a head, two eyes, you're building familiarity into it. Does that make it more or less scary? There is something a lot more terrifying about being able to look at a creature, seeing that there is a human relatable side, right? That could be me. You have to come up with the style and, and what are these creatures? What are the roots of these creatures? Are they aliens? Is it uh, something biological? Is it something that's evolved? You know, you have to kind of set down those roots first. We want to ground everything we do, so we want people to believe on what they see, and that kind of breaks the barrier on thinking that that is just another game or just like a, something created. Glauco's amazing, not just his creative eye, but also just, you know, his mind and the way that he has taken the human form and 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 turned it on its ear, kind of giving you this this kind of twisted humanity vibe with bones growing out and teeth growing out and eyes turning into something different. My favorite, uh, which I had a, I played a huge role in that one personally, I had a lot of fun sculpting is Big Mouth is the guy that we see in the first trailer. And we see it a couple of times in the other demos too. He has a really big mouth <laughs> and he has like very long teeth. And you know, there's a lot of saliva and like goo like coming out of his mouth. I don't know how many versions we did of him. Well, not in 3D, but we probably have about 50 different designs of him. Yeah, that one is my favorite, maybe for bias reasons, but. <laughs> We wanted a two head that was split in half right from the very beginning and, and those are still there. There are some other ones that we haven't revealed yet that are really, really exciting too. That I can't wait for the players to see. Our combat experience is really getting close to these creatures and we show full detail. We don't hold anything back. A lot of it was picking melee as the 50% of our gameplay. You are very close to enemies. You're always within reach of them and so you're in danger. That also is a way to show the brutality right in front center stage. Uh, so as we're doing these melee hits, you're seeing that reaction. Our camera's close up to the enemy, to you. So you see the arm pop off, you see the blood. <laughs> Our guard system plays a big role in showcasing brutality. It's basically a system that scales through enemies, through environmental hazards, and basically allows the enemies to get dismembered, to spawn blood, to have the deaths. Like if I hit someone, 
with a bat, stun baton. How's that arm gonna fall? If I shoot him in the head, like, is it going to explode? We have a lot of tools built into the system that we can, you know, achieve all of these different things. Oh, shit! That's the direction that we wanted to take. Uh, so in that vein, uh, we just uh, went to the supermarket and we were buying a bunch of uh, different types of meat. Uh, something with uh, more fresh, more red, uh, something with more fascia. Fascia is the, is the tissue that covers muscles. We've worked very closely with Jorge throughout the process. He's so passionate. What he did was he bought a light box and then he put the chicken breast on the light box and it's actually measuring lighting values, physical lighting values from it. We bring the meat into, into here, uh, into the studio. Uh, we place them on a light rig and we just uh, make the lights spin. And we basically have uh, an image for every single light direction. And that allows us to understand how this tissue is reacting to light. So we can understand uh, how to actually replicate that in the game. His passion and dedication, I have not seen anywhere else. So we went to actually pierce our, our finger a little bit to get some blood, uh, blood in there. And then we actually recorded how the blood will change over time to understand all the range of colors that blood can have from very fresh to, you know, how it looks like after 45, one hour. Uh, and we have that, uh, we made that available for artists as reference. Jorge has definitely pushed a lot of boundaries when it comes to, you know, fidelity and, and visual improvements. He is uh, a spectacular engineer. The dodge system is uh, very important to our game because it really separates us from a lot of other games in the horror genre. What that is, is if you hold left on the left stick while an enemy is attacking, you will dodge their attack. And if they come back again and hit you again, you have to hit right. If you don't have the rhythm right, th then you will get hit. The other thing it allows us is our AI is uh, relentless. They will not stop coming for you. So if you shot them in the leg, you blew off both their legs. Well, that doesn't mean they're dead. Now they're crawling at you. And if they're crawling coming at you, if you can't shoot them, well, hit them on top of the head. Boom! So we are building this world like full of fear, full of horror. And then when you fight an enemy, you get a satisfaction of like ripping off the enemy's head. It's just really trying to enhance that they are very brutal with you. You can be brutal with them, but they will be brutal back. It shows consequence, right? You, you don't only see the threat, you can really understand what's gonna happen if that's gonna be reaching to you and it's gonna be defeating you. And that's where we have a lot of fun because we want the player to feel like, oh man, like, did I just die like that? Like, oh, this is horrible. And like, this is so disgusting. We've got some real cool death scenes uh, for Jacob, really special. It's really about seeing what happens to us when we lose against creatures. We show every single detail and that, that's, that's what really drives uh, that experience for us. Most games don't reward you for dying. They just give you a nice, you are dead and then take you back. Now we want to even reward you for dying. Uh, we, we think that's, that's fun to do. It's a little bit of light relief in a failure moment. And uh, we think they're very kind of collectible. Uh, from, from the player point of view as well. I'm looking forward to the YouTube video supercut of all of our deaths, because I'm looking forward to that, because I don't think I've seen them all back to back and just yeah. looking forward to that video. One more. We want to be scared shitless without suffering the negative consequences of it in reality. Our mind wants to understand the world in a greater sense without putting our bodies in, in, in danger. We handle it better when we can find significance. We can find meaning in it. And good storytelling will help us find that purpose in really straightforward ways characters striving to succeed against all odds. I mean, that's really the, the secret sauce of storytelling. And horror does that, I think, better than almost any genre. And brutality is a huge element to that. 